How ridiculously loud is this? So the wind's a little loud, but we'll get on into the video. How are you guys all doing? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we're here with another video, but before we talk about that real quick, if you guys are looking for a clan chat to hang out in, feel free to join mine, Large EXP Lamp, spelled just as the name is right here. We just got a lot of people that hang out in here and, you know, like to chat shit. So as far as what I'll be doing this video, I know that the gear may may make it look like I'm about to do something pretty cool, pretty fresh. Um, however, not really the case. What I'll be doing today is kind of a play on, I guess I've never done a comparison really of the chaos altar itself i've done superior dragon bones there only and that i mean while superior dragon bones were fun at the time now it's gotten to the point where no one's really going to use superior dragon bones for prayer for the most part so what we're going to do today is compare what it's like to actually use stuff like wyvern dagonoth and i'll include superior dragon bones here now the one thing that is very interesting about this entire process is there are so many different ways to train prayer uh depending on how you want to do things you can actually go to houses and if you guys don't know how that works um, I'm not gonna explain the entire thing but for the most part people go down to Remington right down here there's a house portal you can unnote your bones here go in people's houses and use the gilded altar uh, that's typically the most common way to go about training prayer however uh, recently I guess about three or four months ago they added the chaos altar into the wilderness pretty far on up here uh, right here so you can use the bones on the altar and every time you use a bone there's a 50% chance that you're going to get the bone back so for every bone that you use you're actually going to get two bones of use for the most part it may sound weird but think about it if you have one bone and there's a 50% chance of getting that bone back once you use the next bone there's again a 50% chance of getting that bone back as well all in all averages out to two bones really really nice because it allows us to save some money but obviously it is in the wilderness so that is where the problem is going to occur on top of that, you do actually get more XP per hour here if you're constantly doing the bones because since if you're using the house method, you actually have to bank every time you know, you're know you done with an inventory. Here, the inventories last twice as long, so you're just constantly doing prayer. But yeah, that's the basis of how we're building this video. Now, as far as how I'm going to go about testing the wilderness, I'm not really going to show you guys how to do regular house prayer. If you don't know how to do that, I mean, just look up a guide. It'll be real quick. So as far as what I'll be bringing for this, I wouldn't recommend using a burning amulet. I thought about it. I used one. There's just there's too many PKers at that location. So if you have desert treasure done, you can actually just use these tabs and that's what I'm gonna go ahead and use today. So what you wanna do, uh, you can choose on however many bones you wanna bring. The more bones, the more risk, obviously, and you're gonna wanna bring some noted so that you can turn them in if you want. As far as the amount, you're gonna wanna get them out noted, of course, and I typically bring 100. Now, if you don't wanna risk this much, you don't have to. Uh, I'll explain that here more in a little bit. On top of that, you're gonna need 50 GP for every bone that you have. So in this case, I'm gonna grab 5K. A teleport as well and then probably you may as well just fill up your inventory with bones also so uh, as far as what worlds you're gonna want to be in I t well while I'm in American world right now typically I try to avoid American worlds I feel like PKers are just more prevalent it it's just me more than likely PvP worlds also are pretty nice considering that there's just less people in those worlds so you may be less likely to find people there now I've done some testing as far as how many people on average I saw per hour here for the most part during dead or more dead hours it was about four Four occurrences of people yeah as we can see here I don't even know that guy's probably just doing prayer but I mean maybe if he's cool let's, let's just let's just okay he's not cool he's not cool if you see low level alts like that you're gonna you're just gonna want to book it to another world right now it's currently 2 p.m. so this is definitely not a slow time which is why we may be seeing oh gosh which is why we may be seeing a few more people than normal. I tested this out actually uh, at about 8 to 9 a.m. Now that is Eastern time, so at the same time it was 2 to 4 somewhere in mo most parts of Europe where people play. Obviously there is no time where it's most dead, but I'll say late at night, early morning, stuff like that is going to be best for you. Avoid the weekends as well. I mean, you can come here however you want or whenever you want, but more than likely if you come here during active hours of the scape, you're going to just run into more people. If that's not a problem for you, then it really doesn't matter, I guess. So whenever you get towards the end of an inventory, you're just going to want to go ahead and head out this large door and use your bones on this guy over here. He'll unnote them for you and you can continue on. Now, I personally didn't bring any gear here. There are two ways to die. You can either bring a glory, run eight levels south and just actually teleport. Or if you want to, there is the chaos fanatic up here to the northeast and I'll run to him real quick to show you. You can die to him as well if you'd like to do that instead. They're both relatively quick. Um, this one's going to be just three levels to the north. He'll, he'll 
it'll wreck you pretty quick. So uh, as you can see, I mean, it might just be worth it for you to come up here. You can decide that on your own. In addition to that, you can actually bring gear that will deter PKers. Uh, you're going to have to have some pretty decent gear for the most part. If you bring like Black Dehyde, obviously people are just going to tear through that. So a lot of solo PKers up here. So if you come up here and say an Armadale chest plate, Armadale legs, and a Den's bulwark, you may be able to make it away. You'll probably want to bring some brews as well since I'm assuming you're going to be here for a little bit. However, I'm going to assume for this video that most people aren't going to be able to afford 60 mil gear to come up here and do a little prayer. If that's the case, feel free to use it. If it's not the case, obviously, you can just run south and teleport. Personally, didn't <laughs> didn't have anything on me. So, But with that said, I've already tested all of this, so I'll go ahead and now talk about the stats that I was able to find. So as far as prayer goes, there actually are just a lot of variations of ways that you can do it. So I've covered four here today. I think these will be the main four that we'll be going through. So, uh, yeah, basically it's going to be split up into two that are using the regular house method and two that are using the wildy method. So we'll start with the most probably casual method, I would assume, which is going to houses and using dragon bones or any type of bone and just not actually one ticking them, just allowing yourself to AFK. As far as the XP per hour, I'll be looking at three different bones, regular dragon bones, then Dagonoth bones, then superior dragon bones. So we'll start with the regular dragon bones. As far as your XP per hour there, you should expect 290. 95k so close to 300k per hour and the overall gp that you'll be spending will be close to 2.9 mil uh keep in mind that the bones per hour that we'll be using for this method will be close to 1.2k so that's where i'm getting the gp per hour results as far as dagonoth bones go you'll be expecting about 512k xp per hour so obviously a pretty significant increase there about 66 percent and then if we look at the gp per hour there though it obviously goes up a ton up to 9.3 mil per hour then finally we have superior dragon bones that can get you 614k XP per hour and on top of that the cost for those is 12.5 mil per hour. Now I'll compare the regular AFK method to the wilderness kind of AFK method. In the wildy you can't AFK but we'll assume you're not manually using D bones on the altar for every bone. If that's the case you have to consider the fact that you're going to die, bank, and other stuff like that. I've taken that all into account and basically what you can expect as far as XP per hour with dragon bones is 346k and the GP they have to spend per hour is close to 2 mil. 1.7 mil of that being the dragon bones and an estimated 300k per hour in deaths. Now obviously if you're someone that is good at getting away from peak cares or you're very focused then that will that cost will go down for you i'm just assuming that that's going to be the average cost per hour for most people now you may be wondering here why is the xp per hour higher in the wildy when you'll have to be banking and doing stuff like that it's because you'll just be constantly using bones every time you get done with an inventory when you're at remington you have to leave the house go to a guy go back in and in the wildy too it's easier to unnote your bones as well that's the logic behind it as to why it's better now dagonoth bones you can expect 600k xp per hour which is obviously pretty good again and uh, your total cost to come in close to 6.5 mil per hour if you die less you can bottom out at a minimum uh, 5.6 mil per hour so really obviously depending again on how often you die next we have superior dragon bones coming in at 720k xp per hour or just a ton of xp if you think of it and then the price for this is 7.4 mil per hour and it goes up 1.3 mil if you actually do end up dying an average amount so all in all up to 8.7 mil per hour in cost on average now now I'll look at the one ticking, basically comparing the one ticking from house method to the one ticking at the chaos altar. With the chaos altar, I will have a little caveat that you're more than likely going to have an alt there. If you're someone sufficient enough to be one ticking dragon bones and you want to do it in the wildy too, uh, it's probably going to be pretty convenient for you to just have an alt account. It literally doesn't even have to have like any levels. It just has to be able to hold bones for you and denote them whenever it needs to. Honestly, the lower level of the account, maybe even the better. There's not a lot of level 30s running around out here, but you may happen to find some scouts that could potentially kill you I guess what I would do if you have an alt unnoting bones is pretty much just log out after every time granted you are one ticking here so it's a little bit more annoying but if you'd rather stay log in and take the risk that's up to you as far as the one ticking at the house goes though you can expect 650k XP per hour with dragon bones obviously a huge increase from the regular 300k you'd get if you were just hanging out chilling uh, your total GP per hour would go up to 5.8 mil close to that Dagonoth bones are 1.1 mil XP per Per hour so again just insane that comes in at a cost of also an insane 20.4 mil per hour so obviously a lot of cash being used there and superior dragon bones finally come in at 1.35 mil per hour and the cost there is 27 mil per hour so just insane now if we look at the wildy rates with an alt account basically what you can expect with dragon bones is close to 807k per hour
power and that'll come in at a cost of four mil per hour here if you die since your alt should be holding the bones it wouldn't be as big of a deal more than likely you're going to lose very few bones per inventory so it's not going to make that big of a dent as far as these costs per hour go since they're already so astronomically high moving on to Dagonoth bones you can expect 1.4 mil xp per hour that comes in at a cost of 13 mil per hour again and then finally superior dragon bones if you are using the one tick method in the wildy are going to be 1.67 mil per hour and the total cost per hour is 17.3 so obviously lowered a little bit but then again you are in the wildy it's a little bit more of a hassle so obviously you're going to make a little bit back so what should you take away from this what should you be thinking after hearing these stats well more than likely what you're thinking is i'm going to go to the chaos altar in the wildy and i'm going to train some prayer and that's probably what you should get away from this basically from everything i found and you know just being out there in the wildy i honestly was out there for probably about two hours checking how often people were coming and trying to kill me as soon as i was recording that clip earlier at around noon to one my time it was a lot more packed i was there whenever i was testing it 8 to 9 a.m so definitely a lot more relaxed then and i'd highly recommend that if you're going to use the chaos altar to gain your prayer do it during the off hours even if you aren't someone that dies often it still is just going to be so annoying and Honestly, if you can come back at a different time and do it, you may as well, because you can always do other stuff in game. Altogether, though, the Chaos Altar will offer you more XP per hour since you're just constantly using bones more often than you are using the regular method and at a lessened GP per hour. So obviously, it makes the most amount of sense to do. The real question here was are there an overwhelming amount of PKers? More than likely, I don't think everyone's going to flock there because of this video. And even if they do in like a week's time, it should just be as dead as it is now, I would imagine. Thus, meaning that in the future, I think Chaos Altar is actually worth it, even though it may seem like a hassle all right so that is going to be it for the video uh personally it's just a question that i had because i have 83 prayer at the moment i got a lot of cash in my bank and i'm just trying to check out where i should go for my prayer and i figured a lot of you would have the same types of questions that i would have if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like on top of that if you guys have anything you want me to compare or check out in game and see if it's worth doing anything of the sort uh feel free to let me know down below in a comment and on top of that if you guys really do enjoy the channel like you know grade a stuff uh feel free to subscribe as well it's free and uh it helps me feel better about myself but yeah with that said though hopefully you guys do have a wonderful day and uh peace